finally received the Ulanzi camera cooling fan that I ordered. Does it help prevent overheating for the A6700? Short answer, yes. But there are some limitations and things to look out for. In this video, we will do a quick unboxing and install it on the A6700. And also point out a couple of quick tips when mounting it, as well as showing the fit on the ZV-E10 later on in the video. Then we can run some indoor tests at 4K 30, 60, and 120, and some outdoor tests at 4K 30 and 60. And let's not forget, is fan noise gonna be an issue while this is attached to the back of your camera? We're gonna test that also. I'll have this little beauty linked in the description below if you wanna check it out for yourself. All right, let's get started. The cooling fan comes with two adhesive backings for your camera body to mount the fan onto. I'll tell you why that's useful in just a bit. This little fan feels very solidly built. I don't know about the internals, but the frame is sturdy and solid. I buy a lot of accessories made by Ulanzi and I've always been pleased with their quality and value. And I truly do recommend you check some of their gear out if you haven't already. By the way, this is not sponsored by Ulanzi. I'm just sharing my experience and honest thoughts. Let's install it on my A6700. I'm just wiping the back of my camera body with a little bit of alcohol to clean any oils from my skin, as well as any dirt or dust. And then I'm drying it thoroughly after. Now peel off the adhesive backing and apply it to the back of the camera body. Here I'm using a card that I have that came with an old screen protector to smooth it out and to push out any air bubbles and make sure that it's adhered well. You're likely gonna need to apply this adhesive backing to your camera. It comes with two of them in the box. Because the parts of the back of your camera, such as screw holes or any grooves there, disrupt the smooth surface and create a void under the suction cup, and it will not allow it to adhere to the camera properly without the backing material that smooths it all out. This little piece of material actually bridges any of those gaps, and when the suction cup is pressed over the top, it allows a smooth, flush surface for it to suction to. Here's one thing I want you to be aware of when installing this little fan on your camera. I had first pressed the fan suction cups onto the back of the camera and I left it sit on the table for a while. When I came back to it, the fan had detached. Now I especially wouldn't want the fan to fall off if it's sitting up in the air higher on a camera tripod or while walking with it and either losing it or breaking it or just making a loud noise that'll disrupt your video. Not to mention that could just be embarrassing. So what I did was take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol. I had 70% on hand, but 50 or 90% would work just fine. Realistically, a cloth dampened with a bit of water would probably be better than nothing, or maybe even a little bit of lens cleaner. Spray a bit onto a cloth. Don't just spray it all over your camera and don't use anything harsh or aggressive like a chemical. Now wipe the surface of the suction cups and the camera backing material and dry it thoroughly. Then I lined up the fan and pressed it onto the back and it never came off while I was recording any of my tests. So that worked really well for me if you wanna give it a try. If you have an issue with it detaching from your camera back, I did that with each new setup for recording and it stayed in place every time with no issue. Now let's get the test going and see what this thing can do to help us out. Our first indoor test is 30 frames per second, 4K XAVCS, 10 bit, 422, and I'm shooting an S Log 3. Oh, and in case you haven't seen the last video, we are on the updated firmware version 1.01. .01. We are going to run this fan on the first speed or low speed. And the A6700 is still going strong at one hour. 24 minutes so far with no temperature overheat warning, but the camera battery is running out. And finally, the camera battery runs out and shuts off at one hour and 35 minutes. And the little Ulanzi fan still has half its battery left and a camera temp reading of 41 degrees Celsius or nearing 106 degrees Fahrenheit is what the Ulanzi fan temperature sensor shows. That looks like a win for the Ulanzi fan, 4K 30, 10-bit going the full distance of the camera's battery. 
This little fan definitely did its job. That's a huge difference than the previous test results with my personal A6700, which typically overheated on average between 30 and 45 minutes runtime. Now I know some of you want to see some outdoor tests. Okay, okay, I tested it outdoors also and it's in this video. But let's keep going, I have just a couple more indoor tests for the runtimes. We want to see what 4K60 can do, right? Same settings this time, in 4K60 FPS, fan speed on 1. Okay, we have a temp overheat warning at 47 minutes and 42 seconds before overheating and camera shutdown at 59 minutes. So the fan helped my A6700 run 4K 60 FPS for right about an hour straight. All of my previous tests of 4K 60 resulted in an overheat on average of 13 to 15 minutes. That's a significant difference in 4K 60 runtime indoors compared to my previous test results. Now, I don't personally need to run 4K 60 for anywhere close to that long, but some of you have told me that you do. So there's a little bit more information for you for 4K 60. Let's give 4K 120 a run. 4K XAVCS 10-bit S-Log3 Now 4K 120 is on another level with cooking my camera, and I get an overheat warning at just over 22 and a half minutes before overheating and shutting down just past 25 minutes. 25 minutes is a long time to be running 4K 120 10 bit on a camera, and that's way longer than most of us need. But that's what I got out of mind with the fan attached to it, 25 minutes recording time compared to previous tests without the fan where I got typically about 15 minutes runtime in 4K 120. Again, that's a big improvement with the cooling fan attached. All right, let's take it outdoors and get a different view. I shot this test one evening on the Mississippi Gulf Coast and it was 84 degrees outside at the time. And with humidity, the forecast said it feels about like 90 degrees. All right, here we start this test with 30 frames a second, XAVCS 4K, 10-bit 422. And we got the fan spinning. Now let's see what kind of runtime we get. Okay, this test run is going really well with no sign of an overheat. The sun has gone down and it's gotten dark. So I had to stop this test myself at one hour and four minutes, but the fan still had half its battery life and was moving along with no problem. That was over an hour with 4K 30, 10 bit outdoors. Unfortunately, I ran out of daylight to keep recording that, but based on what I've seen so far, I have faith this little fan would have taken it the distance. Let's see how the A6700 shooting 4K60 10-bit handles outdoors with the Ulanzi fan attached. Here we go, keeping the settings consistent. We're trying to see what kind of improvement in run times we can achieve before an overheat with high video quality specs compared to my previous video test without the fan. We're running speed one on the fan just to give you a baseline idea of whether or not this fan helps. Obviously, so far it has helped improve run times, either with no overheat at all or significantly increasing recording times before an overheat takes place. You still have Speed 2 available, which may help you squeeze out a bit more cooling for the really high heat producing formats like 4K60 or 4K 120. Let's check back on the 60 frames test. Here, while recording this test, it was 90 degrees outside and with humidity, it was forecasting to feel more like 98 degrees. Needless to say, it was hot outside in South Louisiana. Wow, with the temperature so high outside and 4K60 heating up the camera like an oven, even with the fan on, I got an overheat warning at 12 minutes and 34 seconds before a shutdown at 14 minutes and 17 seconds. That 14 minute runtime outside was not nearly as long as the one hour recording time that I got inside. But outdoors in Louisiana is a different kind of beast usually in the months between July and September. Now when you attached a motorized spinning fan to the back of your camera for the purpose of using it while recording video, you probably want to know if it's loud. 
or if it's gonna interfere with your video while using an on-camera microphone. Well, let's take a look at that, and we'll start with an on-camera mic test of the A6700 with the Sony ECM B10 shotgun microphone. Here's a quick rundown of this test. I recorded the video footage of the A6700 camera with the fan attached to it, using my FX30 to record it, while also recording at the same time with the A6700 and the Sony microphone attached. Then I synced up the audio from both cameras in DaVinci Resolve and then deleted the audio from the FX30. So you will see the FX30 footage showing the A6700 and the Ulanzi fan in operation, while hearing the camera audio from the A6700 and microphone with the Ulanzi fan attached to it and running. I am by no means an advanced audio guy, but I continuously try to learn and improve. So let's take a listen. On this Sony mic attached to the A6700, I have the filters off. I didn't use the built-in microphone filters because I'm sure many of you aren't using the same mic. So the point was to see if any noise recorded in a quiet environment can easily be remedied in post. I have it set to auto audio level and selected the super directional focused front area pickup pattern. This is just a simple common audio recording setup for an attached camera mic. Okay, this first clip is the fan turned on to speed one and no adjustments to audio are made in editing. Let's take a listen. I don't know if you can hear anything there. It's probably easier to hear with headphones, but there is just a low slight hum of fan noise. It barely reaches negative 30 on the DaVinci Resolve sound meter in the software. I'm now gonna turn up the volume on that same clip so you can hear it easily. I'm gonna play the same clip with the volume up, but I will turn on the voice isolation filter in DaVinci Resolve halfway through. This time, same clip, volume up, no other filters, but halfway through, I will add a dehummer audio effect. One more effect this time, volume up, no other filters or effects. Halfway through, I'll apply a noise reduction effect. Okay, let's take one different approach on the fan noise test. I'll be recording the fan noise with the Sennheiser MKE 600 microphone right up close to the Ulanzi fan. And that mic ran to the Zoom H6 external recorder to provide a visual and audible measurement for you. To start, I'm plugged into channel 4 of the Zoom H6 audio external recorder and adjusting a dial down to a level where virtually no ambient sound or background noise is being picked up. This is with no adjustment to audio in DaVinci Resolve. You may need headphones to hear anything, but I will run the clip again after with the volume up so that you can hear it easily. First, you will hear the fan speed switch to speed 1 and then to speed 2. Then I will turn up the volume so you can hear the fan noise easily and get a sense of how smooth and quiet it is. I'm not really hearing any issue with fan noise being a problem. And if you are recording your audio externally with something like a Zoom H6 or something like this little Tascam DR05X, 
Then your microphone will likely be placed further away from the camera in a boom position and you would likely not pick up any fan noise at all. Battery life. I didn't spend time measuring the exact battery life on the Ulanzi fan because as I was trying it out and running tests, battery life was never an issue and it never showed any evidence that it would be an issue. I had it run for over a couple hours at a time and still had juice left. But if you ever need to hook it up to an external power source while in use, you can do that. Here I am able to run the fan while it is hooked up to an external power bank. This is my newer set of spare camera batteries for the Sony A6700 and FX30. And the charging dock can be used as a power bank. It works pretty well. The last thing I want to take a look at here is size and weight and how the fan fits on other cameras like the Sony ZV-E10. The Ulanzi cooling fan weighs in at 61 grams or 2.15 ounces. It is 7.1 centimeters wide or 2 and 13 16th inches. 5.2 centimeters tall or 2 and a 16th inches. It is 1.5 centimeters at its widest point in width or 5 8 of an inch. And 1.2 centimeters or 12 millimeters or right between 7 16 and a half an inch at its narrower point in width. Let's take a quick look at the fit on the ZV-E10. I'm not using it on the ZV-E10, so I didn't apply the adhesive backing here but you would certainly need to if you were attaching it to the ZV-E10. The suction cups won't grab on the left side otherwise, as you can see here, because of the grooves and screw holes in the back of the camera. But otherwise, as you can see, it fits the back of the ZV-E10 quite nicely. What about cameras like the A6400 that have the flip up hinge type of rear screen instead of the flip out screen? I'm sure if you wanted to get creative, you could probably rig it up in some way. But I don't think the A6600 and previous A6000 series designs lend an easy back to attach the fan's design to. Not like the A6700, ZV-E10, and several other cameras that have a smooth back to them behind the flip-out screens. This little Ulanzi fan works very well, and it has a nice build quality feel to it, and is reasonably priced. I'm glad I ordered it, and it may come in handy for me to use with my A6700 as a B-cam recording 4K30 for an extended recording time. I'll leave the fan link below if you want to take a look at it. Please consider subscribing. I have plenty more videos coming if you're into videography, photography, or really anything involving cameras. Hopefully you liked this video and it was helpful information for you. Feel free to ask me any questions or leave any comments down below. Thanks for watching.